I've been meditating for a long time, since 1987 on a daily basis or 1986, something like that. And I don't normally share what goes on in my meditations. Um, they're personal and really probably of not a lot of interest to a lot of people except for the person going through the meditation. But recently I went through a Zen meditation that absolutely changed me completely. It blew my mind. It did what people say uh, Buddhism and different forms of meditation can do. But I want to tell you it was very surprising. And the reason I say it's surprising is because I did not have an intention to go through this process. I was just doing my regular walking meditation. I do a seated meditation and a walking meditation every day. Believe it or not, the walking meditation is done in my gym and on the treadmill. And my eyes are closed and I've been doing it for a very, very long time now. And I get into this meditation and I'm going to express what happened. And I'm going to tell you that one of the most important things I could say is my teachers over the years, uh, Sensei Andy, who I'm working with right now, who's a disciple of uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, one of the most amazing Buddhist teachers ever. And all my other Buddhist teachers have told me the same thing. Don't meditate for enlightenment. Don't meditate to change. Don't meditate to awaken. Don't meditate to find nirvana. And it's kind of funny because I've been blessed, you know. In the early 80s, I was told the opposite by people that were teaching Buddhism. You know, the reason that we're doing it is to live 24-7 in nirvana. And I don't know if that's possible at the human level. It could be. I don't know. But it's not very... Well, let me put it this way. It would be outrageously rare, right? So... I'm on my walking meditation and my eyes are closed and I'm just counting my steps. It's just a count one, count one, count two, count two. And the purpose of that is to get us into a mindset where we can deal with whatever emotions that come up. Sometimes people use affirmations when they're doing their walking or seated meditation. Everything is great. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you do it on a regular basis, right? So I started to feel something in my stomach and I have never felt it before. And it was weird, right? My eyes are closed. I'm walking, I'm feeling extremely relaxed, I'm in the middle of my meditation, and then I feel something in my stomach. It was actually, it felt like something was alive, quite frankly. And so I just kept breathing and breathing, and then all of a sudden this smile came to my face, just this little smile, and I thought, well, that's interesting, I'll just let it sit there, I don't know what brought it up. And then this feeling in my stomach moved up into my chest, right into my heart area. And as it moved up, I felt this outrageous expansion of my heart. I mean, one of the most incredible things, I can't even quite describe how powerful it was, but it's like the whole gym was encompassed in my heart. My heart exploded and just took the whole gym in. Now, at the time that my heart is exploding and my smile now turns almost maniacal, right? It, it, like, I can feel it. I, I can't see. Obviously, my eyes are closed. I don't have a mirror. But I can feel my smile just getting huge, right? And my, my heart is opening up massively. Now, this isn't something you can plan. Uh, I don't think you can anyway. And I didn't even know what was going on. And then all of a sudden, tears started rolling down my face, you know, and I... Don't even, I, I didn't even think, I wonder what people are thinking. I'm glad I didn't even go there. I didn't care. But I'm having this experience that is so deep and so intense. And my heart is expanding wider. And the tears are flowing more deeply. And the smile is incredibly wide. And I don't know what's going on. I'm just flowing with it, right? I'm in the process. I'm accepting it. I'm loving it, as a matter of fact. And then all of a sudden, one of the most insane things I could ever imagine happen. And in front of me, I see a silhouette, almost like if you go to a gun range where you shoot. I haven't, I haven't practiced shot in, in a long time, but I used to go to a gun range and shoot, and they would have the silhouette of the body of the person, right? Well, that's, so I'm, my eyes are closed, and my heart is open, my tears are flowing, my smile is there, and then all of a sudden I see a silhouette on my body. I don't see my face, I don't see shoulder, you know, I see just a silhouette. And I go, oh my God, that's my body. And I keep walking and everything is the same. My heart is expanding. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of my body is another outline of a body. And I look at it and again, no face, no features, but I know that body. It was a former lover. So my eyes are now, or they're closed, but my, my, you can imagine spiritually, my eyes are wide open, my mouth is wide open, my heart is exploding, and I'm seeing a former lover there. And I understand what this is. I understood in that moment that I'm in oneness. I'm in the deepest compassion, but wait, it gets bigger. Josh says I'm in this oneness with this former lover. There was another silhouette 
came behind her, and another body behind her, and another body. Be All of a sudden, it was like miles long of bodies, but silhouettes, right? You can't see anything. Faces, you can't really see anything. And then I understood that that was the process of oneness. That's the process that we all want to reach, or I hope we all want to reach, is that we stop judging even former lovers. I couldn't believe she was the first one in line, although it makes sense in some way, right? But we have to stop judging those people that are different color, different sexual orientation, different political orientation, you know? And that's what happened during this incredible meditation. Now, it has stayed. I am a person who's very anal. I'm very organized, very structured. And since that happened now, about a month ago, things have really gone astray, I'll say, in a good way. You know, I was raised in a very organized, structured manner, which served me very, very well, up to a point. But then it turns into anxiety. Like when you're always on time and you have to be early and you have to be prepared. And so I've been living in a lot of anxiety. And this meditation showed me that. This meditation showed me that I don't have to live there because after I was done with the meditation and I came home, I sat for six hours staring out the window. I'm not, I wasn't feeling anything. I wasn't feeling happy, sad, mad, glad. I wasn't hungry. I didn't have to go to the bathroom. I was in this state, a state of acceptance, a state of complete love a state of complete compassion. No, no emotions coming out of me as I'm telling you. I, I can just tell when I was seated that there was nothing else I needed to do. The next day it was another four hours of seated. And there's been so many times since this has happened that I've sat in the office for two or three hours, just sitting, staring out the window, content. I think that's the word I'd like to use, complete contentment. Will this last forever? I don't know. Do I still meditate every day? Well, of course I do, right? I'm very, very blessed and filled with so much gratitude because the David Essel that came out of that meditation is a radically different David Essel that went into it. It can happen. I've heard of other people that have had very strong changes and very strong awakenings through meditation and working with different individuals. I'm going to ask you to put the time into meditation. If I can help you at all, go to talkdavid.com. To me, it's worth everything in the world. Now, I've been meditating since 1986-87. I've never had the experience that I had about a month ago. I've never felt it stay with me. The most amazing thing in the world is that this is the new David Essel. This is the David Essel that doesn't grind anymore, that is comfortable sitting for six hours. I was shocked. I've done it multiple times. And it's not like an intention. I don't sit down and go, okay, I'm gonna sit for six hours. I sit down, I stare out the window, and I'm just there, pure contentment. Does that mean I'll never stress again, I'll never have problems with money or never have problems with relationships? Or not? Of course not, I'm a human being. I'm gonna go through what every human being goes through. But maybe just with a different attitude, a different mindset, that's what I wanna hold on to. That's why I'm gonna keep practicing. If I can help you with your spiritual path, I can help you with meditation, if I can help you with self-acceptance, self-love, compassion, if I can help you with compassion for others, compassion for yourself, reach out to me at talkdavid.com. This experience has completely changed me in so many ways. I am so grateful that I've never given up since 1986, 87 on my daily meditation. I can't tell you how long it might take you or anyone to reach some level of understanding of what I went through, but it's worth trying. Go to talkdavid.com. We work with people from all over the world, and I'll look forward to helping you. Have a beautiful day.